we have two people here, the magician and the high priestess, who are very powerful in their own right. Again, I keep saying this, flip side of the same coin. Passive, active, both powerful manifestors. It's like uh, you're mirroring each other. The, the feminine and the masculine mirror. Your connection is perceiving this relationship as one in which they are really fascinated with you, fascinated with the connection. Just sort of like, oh, whoa. Wanting to come forward or having had come forward with an offer, I feel like the offer was not enough. The feminine seems to be in a position of power even though she is exposed. So while the feminine is vulnerable in some ways, she is the most powerful. Hey Aquarius, welcome to your love reading for February 2021. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Amanda. I'm at Luna Sync Tarot. If it's your first time here, thank you for stopping by. Please like this video if it resonates and also consider subscribing to my channel. I do general tarot readings and love readings for each sign for each month. If you are coming back around, thank you so much for returning and for supporting my channel. I really appreciate you and I appreciate your support. So Aquarians, it is your birthday month, which means that I'm giving away a free 30 minute uh, tarot reading. If you would like to enter that drawing, just leave a comment below. Leave a comment on this video, the love reading for 2021, February 2021, or leave a comment on um, the general tarot reading for your sign for February 2021. All right. I'm going to be pulling names for that drawing on the 15th of February. So I have been shuffling your cards off camera. Um, I'm going to split the deck three ways and then we will get started. We're going to take a look at you and what you are bringing to the table. We'll look at the person that you're thinking about, your connection, what they're bringing to the table. We will look at the composite energies, what happens when the two of you come together, and we will pull a card of insight. All right, so let's get into this. Let's sync up. In the position of you, we have the magician. Sweet manifesting something into reality in the position of your partner the commun or the person you're thinking about is the high priestess wow two major arcanas right out the bat now look the magician and the high priestess are counterparts <clears throat> the magician is the active the uh, high priestess is the passive the passive um, manifester i don't use the word passive in a ne negative sense it's receptive right so she is going within, um, she's more intuitive to uh, really uh, understand what it is that she wants to bring into reality, right? He is going without, very active in the external world, using uh, very practical, tangible um, action steps in order to manifest. Okay, so these are divine counterparts, essentially, the magician and the high priestess, whoa. They're both magicians in their own right. They're both powerful manifestors in their own right. In the position of the composite energy, we have strength in reverse. Oh, this is really interesting. Another major arcana, by the way. There's an issue here about getting your baser instincts under wraps, under control. Um, look how she's taming this lion, taming the beast. Okay, with her gentleness and her gentle strength. There's something about when you two come together, there's a lesson here about learning how to contain your emotions, almost like contain your emotions in order to channel as a way to manifest something about this relationship. We'll clarify. So we'll get into that a little bit. The insight for the relationship is the seven of wands standing up to defend yourself, to defend your point of view. This doesn't always have to be confrontational or competitive. Sometimes it's just like the ability to stand up and say, this is what I believe in. This is what I stand for. You know, it's um, defending your viewpoint, defending your ground in a very competent, confident way. Ooh, 
it could be that you're meeting your match and it's bringing up some, some of these issues that need to be sort of parsed out, brought to light and um, examined. <laughs> That's funny. I mean, not funny, <laughs> but I love to see um, this type of dynamic, you know, because you both in this type of dynamic or relationship or connection, you're both on equal ground and bringing your own intensity, bringing your own power to the table. Um, these are two people that can really meet and match one another and they bring about powerful, that type of connection brings about powerful lessons for you personally in terms of your growth. So that's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, let's clarify, shall we? Um, okay, so I'm going to use this uh, tarot of sexual magic. However, because of YouTube standards or, or whatever you call them, restrictions around uh, adult content, which is kind of ridiculous, in my opinion, um, I cannot show these images. And if it, if it shows um, nudity. So I'm going to pull some cards here from this deck and I will share the cards with you if um, they are not showing nude images. Otherwise, I'll just describe them to you. I think this is a really powerful deck to show, you know, especially in terms of like sexuality, intimacy and romantic connections to show how that person is understanding the relationship. So I'm going to continue to use it. I want to see how your con connection is perceiving you. <clears throat> okay, so we have the Knight of Swords and we have the Two of Swords. Okay, so very airy, very mental uh, thoughts, ideas, the Suit of Swords um, embodies. So this is this person is, this is kind of the way that they perceive the connection, the way that they perceive you. It's all up here in the mental plane. The Two of Swords is about making an offer, wanting to make an offer, coming forward with an offer, um, an offer in love because he's holding the tulip up to this woman who is turning away. So somebody wants to come forward or has come forward with an offer and there's a sense of rejection about that offer. The Knight of Swords shows a woman who is leaning on a very large sword. She's completely naked. Her uh, rear end is exposed and the Knight of Swords is standing behind her, looking at her, just sort of completely lost in what he is seeing. So there is certainly a fascination here in terms of how your partner, the person you're connecting with or thinking about is seeing you and the connection, just like totally enamored totally fascinated, wanting to come forward with an offer or somebody has come forward with an offer, maybe fearing rejection or actually having been rejected. So in the traditional tarot deck, the two of swords is a block. You know, it shows somebody like this with two swords up. So there's a block around the heart here, either on their part or your part. They're perceiving that there's a block around your heart. Take it how it resonates with you. You will know everybody's different. Everybody has a different situation, but there is some sort of block, emotional block. There is a desire to come forward with an offer, a fear of rejection or an actual experience of rejection. And there is a fascination with the person there's somebody is really enamored. Somebody is very fascinated and just like, whoa, wow, blown away, kind of. Um, the other person here is very confident, very willing to um, be exposed. So how do you view this connection, Aquarius? What are you thinking about when you think about this person? How do you perceive them? How do you perceive the connection? Okay. Five of swords. Ooh, another swords. Again, suit of ideas, thoughts, fears, anxieties. Um, I think I can show this. It just shows a woman's back. Five of swords. Let me take a look at this. 
we're going to read, I'm going to interpret this card on the imagery of this card, but the Five of Swords in the traditional deck, I have to say, is a card of conflict. Now, it could simply, I don't want to turn every reading into like a soap opera, um, because these cards exist on a continuum. So when I say conflict, it could be just a basic conflict. Um, the Five of Swords, though, often depicts a win in vain. So, so engaging in a conflict from a place of egoism, um, this like egoic drama, where you're not connected to empathy and compassion, you're not connected to your emotions necessarily inside of the conflict. It really is about getting what you feel is owed to you or being right. And what is taking a back seat is the other person's feelings or um, regard for the person, the other person. Um, what is most important is to win at all cost. So this is how you are perceiving the connection and the relationship uh, in February. If I'm looking at the imagery in this card, it shows like a couple just having a good time with one another. He's undressing her. She's kind of posing in a sort of flirty, powerful, it's like almost like a power stance. Look at this how she's holding up her arm like Rosie the Riveter <laughs> um, and it shows two people equally meeting one another in play and in frolic so it does not show a conflict it could be that this is the flip side of the coin where there is an aspect of your connection that is very playful where you feel or they feel somebody feels very playful somebody feels very powerful it could be that there's the, a power play inside of your connection, okay? Interesting. So let's clarify strength, the strength in reverse. And this is sort of, it's coming out to me right now as a lesson, some sort of lesson around taming your baser instincts, greed, lust, even emotions that kind of get out of control. Um, impulsivity, uh, words spoken harshly out of emotion and not out of um, care or compassion or logic or analysis. Um, getting all of that, all of those uh, subconscious behaviors uh, under control, bringing them to light and recognizing them and taming them, taming them. So we all know that relationships, intimate relationships, romantic relationships are full of personal triggers for each and every one of us. That's what kind of the, their function is. <laughs> At least that's how I, I, uh, I like to see it at the moment so that I can begin to understand that it is natural that you are triggered inside of a romantic relationship. Um, it's what you do with how you respond to those triggers and how um, how conscious you are about why you're being triggered and how you take care of yourself and take responsibility for your emotions around that. That is most important. Um, I'm talking about generally healthy relationships where the people, the two people respect one another. I'm not talking about abusive relationships here. Okay, consciousness, yes, in reverse. There is something under the surface here that needs to be brought to light in terms of what I just described, where your baser instinct is concerned or um, those emotions, those behaviors even that exist underneath the surface. I'm, I'm imagining the moon card here, things that are not seen, bringing those hidden things to the surface. Something is hidden here where it comes to could even be like an addiction, a weakness, a weakness of some sort. Maybe you don't see this about them. Maybe they don't see it about you. Maybe this relationship, when you come together, the connection is bringing these things up for both of you to contend with. 
Okay, but something's coming to light. Something is needing to come to light. It's under the surface. It's below your consciousness. Okay, so let's clarify the Seven of Wands. Standing up, defending yourself, defending your point of view. Um, what is this? This is in the position of the insight. So I feel like inside of this connection, your call to action will be to defend yourself in some way. I'm not getting a sense that you're in danger. I'm just getting a sense that this is something, a lesson to be learned, like how to do this, right, inside of this connection so that you forever have that wisdom under your belt. What is the Seven of Wands about? And this could be on their part as well. How do, how do I maintain my sense of my integrity, my values inside of an intimate relationship, inside of this connection? Okay, so we have three cards that came out. We have the Five of Pentacles. Necessitating this like standing your ground energy. Necessitating. I don't, I don't know why I said that. I don't, is that even a word? Um, proceeding is what I meant to say. Proceeding to standing your ground energy is the five of pentacles. Somebody is sort of neglected, left out in the cold. There's a poverty here, a poverty mentality. Um, like there's not enough inside of this connection or there's not a, you know, like there's just not enough. And somebody's feeling neglected. Somebody's feeling out in the cold. Um, Knight of Pentacles, it could simply be because somebody inside of this connection is taking way too long, like almost stalled to come forward with something. A stalled action. And then there is an aloneness. Look at the difference in this, these two cards. They both speak to aloneness or solitude, being alone. However, this one sort of uh, is a more difficult emotional experience because it's really like coming from that place of like, oh, I'm not enough. I'm rejected. I'm left out in the cold. I'm abandoned. And this energy is I'm choosing to separate. I'm choosing to enter into a time of solitude in order to get connected with myself and my inner wisdom so that I can use that connection and that information to light my way forward. Even the similarities in the lighting of these cards is striking, but very different. Speaking to, again, a fl the flip side of the coin of aloneness. Yeah. Okay. So the insight here is that somebody's taking, there's like a stalled action either or a distorted action. Somebody took an action that was distorted that caused this sort of like cascade of abandonment issues, feeling neglected, um, having to defend oneself, having to defend your point of view, stand up to something and then retreat into a period of solitude and silence. Okay, alrighty here. Let's back, not back up, let's uh, recap. We have two people here, the magician and the high priestess, who are very powerful in their own right. Again, I keep saying this, flip side of the same coin. Passive, active, both powerful manifestors. It's like uh, you're mirroring each other. The, the feminine and the masculine mirror of one another. The passive and active mirror of one another. Your connection is perceiving this relationship as one in which they are really fascinated with you, fascinated with the connection. Just sort of like, oh, whoa. Wanting to come forward or having had come forward with an offer, I feel like the offer was not enough. I feel like it was kind of like a superficial offer. Um, and having been rejected, the offer was sort of like, mm, it just wasn't enough. 
and the feminine has sort of turned away from the offer. You are perceiving this connection here in February as one of great conflict um, that has a disconnect from compassion and empathy, but also it's like a power play. It's literally a power play. Somebody is in, in a position of power. Somebody is in a position of play. The feminine seems to be in a position of power, even though she is exposed in both of these cards, in the Knight of Swords and how they perceive you, the feminine is completely exposed physically. In the Five of Swords, how you see the connection, the feminine is exposed and she's in a power pose. So while the feminine is vulnerable in some ways, she is the most powerful in others. The masculine is really coming from this place of play they're kind of surface level, just sort of enamored with the visuals. And they need to go deeper to make a real offer to the feminine. Something is under the surface that needs to come to light. There's something hidden here. And it has to do with, again, your baser instincts, those things that we don't quite have control over, but that sometimes drive the bus inside of our connections. Aquarius, if this reading is resonating with you, please hit the like button so that it can circulate amongst others. And also remember to leave a comment below so that you can be entered into the free drawing for your sign for February. I love connecting with you through your comments. I love to hear how these resonate, or the readings resonate. In the insight here, we see the conflict manifesting. You know, how you perceive the relationship is one of conflict. And we see the details or the characteristics of that conflict have to do with abandonment, neglect, feeling left out in the cold, a stalled action, um, defending one's ground, defending one's viewpoint, defending one's perspective, one's self, and solitude, retreat into oneself in order to glean the information that you need in order to move forward on your path. Okay. Wow. All right. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Let's look at what your connection might have to say to you. I like these uh, hidden truth oracle cards. So what do they have to say to you? so interesting because the masculine is really coming forward with this sense of play and superficiality and I don't mean that um, with uh, judgment but kind of surface level like enamored with the visual I can't stop thinking about you yeah they are completely fascinated with the feminine we can't stop thinking about you um, and yet they came out as the high priestess, which is like, dude, if there's any card in the tarot deck that embodies depth, it's the high priestess. It could be that that's the thing that's under the surface for the masculine that needs to come to light. Connecting with their own inner depths, connecting with their intuition. Whoa, you came closer than anyone. Yeah, so there's a, again, wow, so maybe this will be the title of the reading, flip side of the same coin. There's a superficiality and a focus on play, a focus on the visuals, like what you can see at surface level for the masculine. However, there's a depth that they are not exploring inside of themselves. You saw that and required that. I get a sense that you just required it. Because he, the masculine, is coming forward with an offer that is not enough. And the feminine is like, no, you need to come at me with more, some more depth. Okay. What do you have to say to them? You're coming out, Aquarian, as the magician. I have all the tools and the resources and the energy I need to manifest something into the 3D. Something tangible, practical, and real. Okay. 
feeling very powerful. If you are identifying with a feminine energy, feeling very powerful. Vulnerable. You're able to be vulnerable, exposed. Like there's nothing for you to hide. There's nothing hidden here on your part. Vulnerable, strength and vulnerability. What do you have to say? Let's focus here. What do you have to say to this connection? This person that you're thinking about in February. Whoa. Oh, you and I were too young. That's interesting. It might be something for some of you. You and I were too young. Maybe you mean that they were too young because he is acting kind of, the masculine is acting young. I want to be more than friends. Hmm, more depth, please. More connection, please. More than this play. Yeah, there's a person here inside of this connection that wants more depth inside of this relationship. There's another person that is like completely enamored, but also hiding something, also hiding something about themselves, really staying at the surface level, attracted to the visual, needing to dive deeper. They are coming out as the high priestess. Something under the surface <clears throat> that needs to be brought to light. Okay, let's pull a card of guidance for you, Aquarius, as you navigate this connection in February. Okay. I feel like there's a potential for this connection in the future to put this person who is at the surface, who needs to sort of dive deep, into a hermit mode where they do that, they do that work. They, they actually do go deeper. Take the time out to go deeper. Okay, card of guidance for Aquarius. So Aquarius, I am going to publish your general tarot reading right after this video. Uh, make sure to watch that and leave a comment on that video as well if you'd like to be entered into the drawing for a free 30-minute tarot reading for your sign. What do we got here? Ooh, Aphrodite, inner goddess. Sweet. Look at this. Look at the similarities between the, the feminine in these two cards. The, the beautiful tendrils of red hair. And even in the posture, look how similar the postures are. Somebody's vulnerable. Somebody is beautiful in their vulnerability. Somebody is strong in their vulnerability. Awaken the goddess within you through dance, self-care, and appreciating your divinity. Let's read more about Aphrodite. <clears throat> Okay. Allow your inner feminine wisdom and dynamic beauty to rise to the surface. Cherish its power and meaningfulness. No matter whether your physical body is male or female, you have an inner femininity that nurtures you and guides you with its intuitive principles. Now is the time to become aware of, take excellent care of, and celebrate your magnific magnificence. Various meanings of this card. Balance your male energy with more female energy. Take steps to heal your sexuality. Enjoy being feminine. Dance more often. Be receptive in relationships and allow your softer side to come out. Okay. There is so much here about the flip side of the coin, the masculine, the feminine. Um, there's a call to action here with this card of honoring your sexuality, honoring your femininity, um, healing as well. But also if you are the masculine in this connection, um, incorporating more of your feminine energy in order to achieve equilibrium and balance. Um, if you are the feminine, um, 
bringing your femininity into balance with your masculine energy, your masculine nature. Huh. Wow, Aquarius, I hope this reading resonated with you. If it did, please hit the like button. I'm wishing you the best in February. Take good care.